OpenAI just gave ChatGPT the ability to think ahead and hand you a personalized daily briefing while you sleep. Google DeepMind taught robots to search the web, plan multi-step tasks, and even share skills across completely different machines. And Meta just launched an AI video feed that could change how content spreads on Instagram and Facebook. Three huge moves, all pointing to one thing. AI isn't waiting for us anymore, so let's talk about it. Starting with OpenAI, they've rolled out Pulse, and this one changes the dynamic of how ChatGPT interacts with you. Up until now, ChatGPT has always been reactive. You had to ask the questions, guide the conversation, and figure out what mattered. The answers could be good, but the responsibility was always on you to get things started. Pulse changes that. So here's how it works. While you're asleep, ChatGPT goes off and does asynchronous research based on what it's learned from your chats, your feedback, and if you allow it, connected apps like Gmail and Google Calendar. Then in the morning, it hands you a digest, a set of visual cards you can swipe through quickly or expand for more detail. It's meant to be a daily pulse check on the things that actually matter to you. Let's say you've been talking about planning a trip. The next morning, Pulse could surface travel tips, restaurant ideas, or even draft a sample itinerary based on your calendar. If it notices a birthday coming up, it could remind you to grab a gift. If you've been chatting about training for a triathlon, it might suggest a new running route or nutrition advice. So it's not random, it's built around your own context. And yes, you can shape it. There's a curate option where you can literally tell ChatGPT what you want to see tomorrow. Maybe you want a roundup of local events every Friday or tennis updates or new sci-fi books. Over time, the system adjusts to your preferences. The feedback is also simple. Thumbs up if it's useful, thumbs down if it missed the mark. One example came from Isaac Seiler, a student who tested it. He'd been discussing PTO scheduling for a grant period in Taiwan. The next day, Pulse handed him not just calendar management tips, but train and commute info that he said he never would have found himself. That's a good example of where the system shines. It doesn't just repeat what you already know, it tries to extend your thinking a step or two further. And to answer the obvious question, no, it's not designed to keep you scrolling endlessly. Samir Ahmed, who's the technical lead on the ChatGPT team, made a point of saying, the updates end. You go through them and that's it. The whole idea is to get you the info you need and let you move on, not to trap you inside the app. Of course, Pulse is still in preview. Right now it's only for pro users on mobile. It'll come to Plus later and eventually to everyone. OpenAI is clear that it won't always get it right. Sometimes you'll get irrelevant tips or advice for a project you've already finished. But the more you interact with it, the better it gets at figuring out what actually matters to you. Regarding privacy, Pulse works under the same rules as regular ChatGPT conversations. Your data is used to improve your own results, not anyone else's. Feedback about your Pulse doesn't get fed into some global model. It just tunes your personal updates for the next day. Christina Kaplan, who leads personalization and productivity at OpenAI, was pretty direct on this point. Your Pulse is between you and ChatGPT. Still, they've added multiple filters to stop harmful or unhealthy content from surfacing, and the policy and safety teams are watching closely. It's not a solved problem, but they're at least acknowledging it. Fiji Simo, OpenAI's CEO of Applications, said that the goal is agents' AI systems that don't just answer questions but act on your behalf. Earlier this year, they launched ChatGPT Agent, which could follow through on tasks once you gave it instructions. Pulse pushes further toward assistants that understand your goals and help you reach them without waiting for you to type a prompt. It's the start of a shift from chatbot to actual assistant. Now, while OpenAI is moving in that direction, Google DeepMind is going after robotics. They just updated their Gemini robotics models, and this one is a serious step forward. The update comes in two parts, Gemini Robotics 1.5 and Gemini Robotics ER 1.5. Carolina Parada, who leads robotics at DeepMind, explained the change like this. Up until now, robots using AI models could follow a single instruction. Well, fold this piece of paper, unzip that bag, simple one-off tasks. With these upgrades, the robots can plan and execute multi-step processes. For example, instead of just sorting laundry randomly, they can now separate clothes by dark and light colors. When packing a suitcase, they can check the weather in London via Google search and use that information to decide what to pack. 
For recycling, they can look up local rules on compost, recyclables, and trash, then apply those specific instructions. That's a big jump from one command at a time to real problem solving. The way it works is interesting. Gemini Robotics ER 1.5 handles embodied reasoning. It looks at the robot's environment, builds an understanding of what's there, and when it needs more context, it calls on digital tools like Google Search. Whatever it finds gets translated into natural language instructions. Those instructions go to Gemini Robotics 1.5, which actually carries them out using its vision and language skills. It's one model plans, the other executes. And there's another breakthrough here, transfer learning across robots. DeepMind showed how a skill learned on one machine can be transferred to another with a completely different setup. They trained the ALOHA 2 robot, which uses two mechanical arms. The same task then worked flawlessly on the Franca robot and even on Aptronic's humanoid Apollo. That means you don't need to train each robot from scratch, skills can be shared. Kanishka Rao, one of the engineers, said this has two huge implications. First, one model can now control very different robots, including humanoids. Second, a skill developed on one robot doesn't stay locked there. It can move around the ecosystem. Think about the efficiency gains in factories, warehouses, or even home robotics if every robot doesn't have to learn the same skill separately. Developers are already getting access to some of this. Gemini Robotics ER 1.5 is being rolled out through the Gemini API in Google AI Studio. The main Gemini Robotics 1.5 model is still limited to select partners, but that's usually how these things start. Expect it to expand as they refine it. Now let's wrap with Meta. They just announced a feature called Vibes, which is basically a new feed dedicated to AI-generated video inside the Meta AI app. The idea is simple but powerful. You open the app and get a scrolling feed that feels familiar, short clips, easy to browse, but the twist is that every video in there has been generated or remixed using AI. You're not just passively watching though. If a video catches your eye, you can instantly start playing with it. Change the visual style, add music, swap in new elements, or layer on edits until it feels like your own creation. And if you don't want to remix, you can just start from scratch and build something entirely new inside the app. When you're done, there are multiple ways to share. You can post directly to the Vibes feed so it shows up for other users in that same AI-first environment. You can also send it privately through DMs or push it straight out to Instagram and Facebook as stories or reels. And here's an important part. Meta is tying this whole system back into its existing platforms. So let's say you're scrolling Instagram, you see a Meta AI generated clip in your feed. With one tap, you can jump into the Meta AI app and immediately remix that clip yourself. That connection is what Meta is betting on, using their massive social platforms to funnel people into this new AI native creative space. The personalization piece is also baked in. Just like your Instagram feed or your Facebook timeline adapts to your behavior, Vibes will do the same. Over time, the videos you see will shift toward your interests and the kind of creations you interact with. It's still an early preview right now, but Meta says they're already working with visual artists and creators to push the tools further. So expect more advanced models and editing options to roll out, tools that go beyond swapping styles or adding background music, probably heading toward full-scale AI film editing inside your pocket. So here's the question, are you excited about AI taking a more active role in your life or does it feel like it's moving too far too fast? Drop your thoughts in the comments, hit that subscribe button, give this video a like if you found it useful and thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.